Well, it's been about uh, three or four months, maybe. I don't know if it's been that long since I op op uploaded a video. Might even been longer than that. But anyway, we finally got our Wi-Fi high-speed fiber optic line installed, and I uploaded a video just the other day, a one gigabyte video, which would have, uh, under the old system, taken me close to eight hours or more to upload. It probably would have timed out, and I would have had to do it over again a couple times before I finally got it up there. Anyway, once the line was installed, I uh, uploaded that video again, just as a test, to uh, the posting site to see how long it would take. And guess how long it took? Less than four minutes. So uh, I hope we're back in business again and we can once again start doing these projects. And also, since it's been such a long time since we started this video project overall from the very beginning, it's been almost 10 years. There's 430 some videos up there on that site now. And uh, I've been trying to think of a project to do that uh, we could do. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe it's a good idea that we just went back to the beginning, being as it's been so long since I did that first, first bunch of videos. And start there, because we've probably picked up a lot of uh, new people along the way, and we'll pick up a lot of new people in the future, I hope. And uh, this will save them the time of going back and looking through all those videos to find a project. So what we're going to start off with is just carving a cowboy's head. And things have changed. My style has changed a little since back then. Hopefully I've gotten a little better. Of course, the older I get, sometimes I think I'm getting a little worse. But anyway... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to carve a cowboy's head and then we'll just take it from there and see what happens. So, to do that, one of the things that's changed is instead of carving small heads, I now carve big heads. So here's a cutout, and I'm not going to post this on my blog, this pattern, because here's the pattern right here. Everybody should be uh, getting computer literate enough to where they can do a screenshot and just upload this pattern to scale and print it out. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a piece of three inch basswood. This is three inches, just a block of basswood. You can, this is Heineke basswood, the best you can find. And uh, we're just going to lay this on here. But first I want you to look here, hopefully you can see it. You can see these growth lines here. See them come around here? They get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller on this piece of wood. Well, if at all possible, I want to lay out my pattern out here on this uh, outer area where the wood's not so tight as it is back here. And also when I lay it out, I want to look out for things like that. That's a blemish. Could be a little branch or something that come through there. And then back over here we have another blemish. Well, when you're painting, you get these blemishes. Sometimes they work out pretty good, but generally, you know, it's always my luck that they don't. So I want to look at my pattern here, along with the block, to see if I can position this pattern on this little block right here to where I'm not going to run into those blemishes. And I think what it is, it's going to go right here. Let's just see where, how this works here. All right, I'm pretty well on the outside. It'd be nice if it was over here, but we got that blemish there. Well, the hell with it. I think I'll put it over here just for fun. That's going to hit right, All right, the nose will come up here like this. Hopefully it's going to curl right around it. Let me just draw my pattern on here. Now, on the pattern here, I have mapped it out here. This is four and a half inches tall by three, two and three quarters wide from the front to the back. 
And this is a, just a generic pattern, no detail on it at all. And again, we're using a three inch piece of basswood, okay? So, I want to take advantage of this three inches. I don't really want to do it here. I want to do it right here. Now, although my little pattern says four and a half inches, if I do it on this block, it's going to cut its neck off just a little. But I'm not worried about that because I can use a piece of dowel to uh, take the place of this piece that I'm, I won't have. So anyway, here I'm going to lay it out right here. Draw that on there. Just like that, okay? Like I say, I'll just get a piece of dowel here and uh, when I put it put it on the butt, body, I can just put me a piece of dowel in there to anchor that thing to where it's not going to come out. You got to take advantage of the material you have on hand. You don't want to waste a bunch of material. Now, this is a large head compared to a small head. Let's see if I got a small head here. Here's a smaller head. And there's no reason why you couldn't reduce this thing to a size that's comfortable to you that will accommodate your uh, stock that you have on hand. I do that all the time. Okay, let's see one more thing I want to do. I'm going to do, see how taller this line is of the space here and the space here? I'm going to come across here and redraw that right there to where that height and this height match. And I'll show you why I did that here in a bit. Okay? So there, we've got our pattern mark, marked on our block, so now I'm going to go over on the bandsaw and uh, cut it out. Okay, I'm over here at my bandsaw. This is my Craftsman bandsaw. I've been using this thing since 1974. Never had any trouble with it. Only thing I've had to replace are the rubber tires on there. They finally rotted away to where the blade would jump off. So I bought some new ones and it's on its next leg. Anyway, the blade that I use on here, you can see it there. It's a four teeth per inch skip tooth blade. Uh, three eighths, or excuse me, three sixteenths, not three eighths. God don't buy a three eighths inch blade. Three sixteenths inch blade. I get them from Timberwolf. They're excellent blades. I've tried Olson and a lot of other brands, but uh, none of them. It's sort of like basswood. None of them just seem to measure up to this blade here. Uh, if you get on the internet, just look up Timberwolf bandsaw blades and order some. If uh, they don't have your size, just send them a note and they'll make a blade for your size. I use 80 inch, 80 inch blades on my bandsaw here. Okay, so I'm going to cut this out and like I say, this little blade here is the only blade I use for everything I do around here. Hardwood, softwood, anything. Thickness, doesn't matter the thickness, this thing, that blade cuts everything and it turns real tight circles. So here I go, I'm going to cut this out now. It turns pretty tight. Okay, I've got the side profile cut out. Now what I'm going to do is I just want to look at it a bit. Now this is much too wide uh, for what I'm going to use it for. 
So I'm going to cut down, cut down the uh, the width of the blank. So it's going to be about right there. It's about. Let's see. I'm going to take off about a half an inch. Now if you want, you, you know, if you're doing this for the first time, just drill a hole through there and hang that up and keep that as a pattern. Alright, now like I said before, Judy will come around on this side. Because I drew those lines pretty, this line and this line pretty well close. They're a little off, but that's alright. Now I can come in here. Just take it. Take out that and I'll create the neck. Now, I want to show you something that if you're comfortable with your tools, you can do. If you're not, by all means, do not do it. Because I don't want to, someone to hurt themselves and they say, Well, Lynn Doty said I could do that. Well, no, I said don't do it. So I'm going to raise my bandsaw blade up. And I don't have a pencil, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take off a little sliver here. Basically, see that line right there, that saw line? That's what I'm going to do. Kind of tilt it, holding on to it. Just like that. Turn it around. thing on that side. See, that gives me a shape at the top of a, about what the head would be, as you'll see as we're carving this thing, okay? So now it's back over to the workbench. Okay, before we go any farther, here's one I just finished. Now this, this head size here is the same size as this one up here. So that's what we're aiming for. I like to do things bigger right now because uh, you know, a lot of people carve these little eight inch figures. Oops. Stand about that tall. And they'll buy it and they'll take it and they'll look at it for a while and then they'll set it up on some knick knack shelf and it's forgotten. Well, they're not gonna put my carvings up on a knick knack shelf. I don't want them to put them on a knick knack shelf. I want my carvings to stand alone. I look I look at wood carving from an artistic standpoint more than from a craft standpoint. Let's put it that way. That's important to me. And it seems to be working out because my carvings are fairly popular. And that's, that's the way I like it. Now, I want to show you something here. Look here. Remember that little blemish over here? I'll bet you that sucker goes all the way through and now look how big it's gotten. You just can't win. So, Carving. Let's start carving. Now, everybody that knows me knows I use this as my main carving tool. I've used it for, well, since, oh God, since 1970, back, probably even earlier than that. I've, it's, it's worked for me. It might not work for you, but by God, it works for me. And uh, I swear by it. So anyway, let's get going here. So what I want to do now is I'm going to start off by, you know, first experimenting around to see which way this grain is running on this piece of wood. Because every piece of wood you carve, that grain, is going to run a little bit different than the one you carved before. And also, while I'm doing this, is I'm cleaning up my carving, or the blank, where I can see, see it a little better. By that I mean I can see the figure as it appears a little better, rather than looking at all this, you know, rough sawn area here. Now the grain on this piece seems to run, run in my uh, favor. By that I mean it. A lot of times, you know. The, Grains, they're going straight up and down exactly like that, you know, the perfect piece of wood. Well, 
perfect pieces of wood, hard to come by if they even exist. A lot of times the grain will shift just a little bit, which causes the chips to come off the wood different on each side. Over here, the chip might fly off like that, but over here, it might split, and you have to turn it upside down and carve this way. But this piece of wood seems to be about equal all the way around. things here, they are hard. And you don't really know what's going to happen with the wood, the way it will come off when you get around those areas. Now with this high speed, uh, higher speed fiber line, my videos will probably be a little longer than they were in the past. In the past you had to pretty well stick to about 15 minutes of video or otherwise you know it occupied my circuit at home all day long to the point to where I'd put them on when I went to bed and say a little prayer that they'd be uploaded by the time I got up in the morning. And a lot of times they weren't. up a little bit because I got a little wild when I cut off the sides of this thing. But that's all right. Now where'd my other knife go here? There it is. My good friend Jim Calici made these knives for me out there in California. And I'm not using that. I'm grabbing one of these. difference about what I say, what you can see, see how nice this looks compared to this old rough stuff here. It's just easier for me to see things when I've got a nice clean piece of wood to work with. I guess you've noticed I'm using a glove and I'm using a finger protector and I use this rubberized what they call it, finger tape. It's not vet wrap. Don't buy vet wrap. This stuff is not good. It's not safe. Get this stuff here. You can also find it on Amazon now. Just look for safe safety tape, I guess you could call it. Costs a few bucks, you know, for a couple of rolls. It'll last you a long time. I put it on my carving glove just to save my carving glove. Because you can see, see what happens to it. I'm pretty aggressive, and I, I don't cut myself anymore. But I sure do chew up gloves and finger protectors. All right, that's pretty good. Get this one right here. Right here. Don't worry about the back here yet. Okay, so. Got that done. So let's just look at this a while here. Here comes his jaw. Comes up like this for his ear. <laughs> it's going to be right on that spot. So I'm going to make it a little lower. Comes back like that. Just like that. I'm going to turn it around. Make a mark here and a mark there. Sometimes those blemishes work in your favor. You know, they'll create a create a nice looking mole on the side of some guy's head. And
Alright, that looks pretty good. Always adjusting, always adjusting. Okay, grip my knife here. I'm going to start right here where the ear would join the head, right there. If you reach up and touch where your ear hits your head, that's where it'll be. I'm just keeping my knife at a slant, not straight in like that, but at a slant. Just put some pressure on it and just follow it right around like that. Okay, just make that mark there. Now, did you see what I did there? I cut into it like here, reach a certain point, and then I just spun my, spun my knife around. Let the lever, leverage of my hand bring this knife around, and that did the cutting. I didn't have to do that anymore. So you just turn, turn your piece of wood. That looks good. I notice another thing too. You know, besides your hands. You know, your right hand to hold the knife, or your left hand if you're left-handed, and the other hand to hold the piece. If you're going to have an accident, it's going to happen over here. So that's why you want a glove on this hand, or on this hand, depending on whether you're right or left-handed. If you're going to cut your thumb, you're going to cut it right there, on that little area right there. And that hurts, you know, because it's in an area that's constantly bending, and it just hurts. So that's why you want a good uh, guard there. And you can see, I just made this one the other day, and it's already getting scuffed up. So where were we? Now, you got your one hand for the knife, the other hand to hold the piece, and the third thing you need is your chest. Because if at all possible, you want to always have your piece break, braced up against your chest. You know, your hand is locked there. So you got these three things all into your chest. You're not out here doing this. You're not doing that. Because that's where the accidents happen. Accidents don't happen back here. As long as you have a thumb guard, a glove on, and, you know, you take a take caution in what you do. Sorry to be preachy, but I've seen too many people cut themselves really bad. And I don't want you bleeding all over the your, your monitor on next to your computer and then blaming me. So once you get that ear outlined, it's just a matter of reducing material to get it down to the relief that you're after. Now when I cut the slab off of this side, I did that knowing that I didn't want this guy to have, you know, big ears sticking out. If I'd wanted that, I would have left more material. I probably wouldn't even have cut off that piece.
All right, see that air coming off of there? See that? Looks good. I'll do this side and then uh, give my uh, hard hand here a break while I do the other side because I don't think you need to see me do both sides. Okay, that's, that's enough for right now. I'm going to cut off this jaw, jaw line. There, we've got the ear, ear out there. Now, I don't want to start shaping that ear yet. I want to come back over here on this side and relieve this ear to where we'll reach that certain point, okay? So, like I say, I'll let Judy take a break here while I do this. Okay, got the other ear outlined there. You can see by the profile on the front of the head there, he's looking pretty good. Now a lot of times, you know, one of the things that I've noticed and all the time I've been carving around other people and other people have been carving, is everybody's in a hurry to get on to the details. And that's where they make a big mistake, I think. If you just wait, you know, and bring your carving you know, along in steps, you'll find that you'll do do a lot better. Okay, so we've got the back end that been pretty well roughed out there. Now we're going to work on the front just a little. So I'm going to draw a line right down in the middle of this head. And if you see from the top, see. See the sort of triangular appearance of it? That's why I took those slabs off. And as we work on its nose, it's even going to get more triangular. So now we're going to block his nose in. There's this, say, there's the bottom of his nose, about right there. Okay. And now we have to decide do we want him to have a mustache or a beard? Well, you can't have a beard because you don't have enough material here really for a beard. You can have a mustache. So let's just give him a mustache. First, let's just make a cut here to indicate that that's where the nose is going to go. Okay? There you can see that nose right there. I can't see anything except your leg. You can't see anything but my leg? Well, you put your head in the way and I lost you. Well, women like it, though. Okay, so we'll come down here, let's just draw him a mustache. Make sure we get it about the people. Taking my hat off. Okay, so there we've got a mustache indicated. So let's just kind of outline that a little more. Slant with my knife, take my knife down and just follow that line. Try to end it off there.
There he's got a mustache. Now. See how that knife slipped off of my hand there? The, the block of wood, when I made that cut, it kind of jumped. Well, I caught it. But that's why you have these things. Okay. Remember, we're just blocking things out here, we're not doing any detail. Over here, I can take that and go like this, and take that chip out to where his, you know, where his cheeks are. Over here, I can't really do that because my handle's in the way. So I have to turn it around and do it that way, or this way, actually. Start to get a little sh shape through his nose. Now I'm going to take a couple chips off of each area right here and watch how quickly that establishes the shape of the face. Right here behind, I don't want to mess with the very point of this nose because I still got a lot to do there. So about right here, I'm going to take off a chip. And then turn it over here and do the same thing. Look at that. See how that came together? It's amazing how that happens. Now watch. The wood will tell you what it wants to do. And, and the reason I like to block things out because then I can see the face come alive on the piece of wood. And by the, the chips that I take off, generally they'll tell me you know, the best way to go. Okay, see how nice and sharp that one comes up? The guy, it looks like he's frowning, doesn't it? If I went and took a little chip off over here a little better, 
to, to even those even those up. Looks like he's kind of kind of mean, isn't it? Frowning. See that? Here. Now, if I take this eyebrow and make it a little lower than the other one, now what does it look like he's doing? Looks like something's going on over in that direction over there. Well, that looks good. I think I'm just going to leave it that way. I could actually, well, I want to keep a little bit of a, a slope on this side. But it's even more pronounced. There you go, now you can see it. Now I can see what's going to happen. Well, we've got a great profile. Hold me here to where you can see it a little better. I think we've got a great profile for a head here, both front and back, and I can see where we're going with it. I can see where we're going. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to stop right here for this first video. And when we'll come back, we'll start doing some, uh, some fleshing out here. But see, we've got the basic shape all the way around. Everything's there. But there's no detail yet. I mean, there's a little bit you can see the mustache and the nose and the eyes and the ears. But there's no real fine detail there yet. And that's good because we don't want that yet. We want to be able to, you know, to let this wood kind of influence us as we go along. And uh, that's the way you'll come up with a good, good figure by just, just taking your time. Let things just happen, okay? So, until next time, I hope this uploads real fast and we get it on the internet tonight. So I'll talk to you later.